the jacket. Flight attendant story time! I'd like to tell you a story from my flight attendant chronologues. <clears throat> Just kidding, this is, an, uh, this is a book. Have you ever had one of those experiences where once it was complete, you stopped and thought, I really feel like this was a moment that I need to remember. I should be learning something from this experience. Have you ever had that? Well, it happens to me quite often because I'm obsessed with an overanalyzing every single thing that happens in my life. Anyway, the last flight that I had was one of those moments and I will never forget pretty much every detail of it. It was simple enough. We took a very well-known Hollywood family to Hawaii and this is during COVID. So they all had their masks on and they were super social distancing and they were very much in fear. When I say that, I mean that they had the wide-eyed look, like they were very attentive, very, um, you know, paying attention to every single thing, making sure they didn't touch too much. They had asked me ahead of time to remove the snack basket. Don't have anything out, basically, that, that they could touch, that could, you know, whatever. Even to the point where I had come into the cabin to check on them, and the lead's wife said, can you just can we minimize the amount of interaction between you and the cabin? Thank you. And I said, oh yes, of course. And she was like, why are you still here? Ah! When they uh, deplaned, uh, there wasn't a lot of thank yous or warmness or anything like that. It was just very like cold, very business interaction. And these people were in great health. They have the world at their fingertips, quite literally. And so that was one interaction, taking these people to Hawaii during COVID. Now, the trip back from Hawaii was a very different experience. It was a couple, um, probably in their 40s, and they were also very fit looking and just happy, just bright and very engaging and social, lots of eye contact. One of their kids were seeing them off and there were hugs and love, and I could just kind of tell, you know, as a flight attendant, you pick up an, an intuition. <laughs> And so I could kind of tell that they really didn't want to do the mask thing, that they were really fine and wanted things to be as normal as possible. So once we had said the briefing, I asked them, you know, how would you like the rest of the flight to go? Would you prefer us all to keep our masks on and me to stay out of the cabin? Would you like me to show you around, blah, 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 blah. And almost immediately you could see the relief on their face like, oh my gosh, yes, can we please be just normal? So the masks came off and we were just like friends and I gave them a tour of the cabin, which is something I've never done before, but they were into it. You know, you, you kind of know your audience as a flight attendant. I gave them a tour of the cabin. I showed them where everything was just in case I wasn't available or if they wanted to help themselves. And it was very friendly. Once we got in the air, they were wanting to socialize. They wanted to get to know me and the pilots. They wanted to engage and get to know each other. And so we got to talking and I said, so what's the nature of your trip? I don't remember what I said. But basically, they were headed from their home in Hawaii to a cancer facility because she had cancer and she was going to get treatment. And for, for whatever reason, you know, sometimes God, the universe, spirit just works through me and I don't know what's gonna, gonna come out of my mouth sometimes. But in this case, she said she was going to get cancer treatment. And I said, ooh, fun. <laughs> and they were like, yeah. <laughs> um, and she immediately, you could tell she was used to this, but she immediately was like, no, it's all, it's all good. You know, this experience has really taught me a lot and I'm grateful for, I have like a renewed gratitude for life and I realized what I was doing wrong. And so I had this profound opportunity to receive insight and perspective from somebody actively battling cancer during COVID. Now that was, it just knocked me on my, on, off, off my feet. They were both artists. They owned a, like a bed and breakfast or something on the island. She very, in a very happy attitude, happy disposition told me that she was working herself to the bone. She was inside all the time on her computer, on her phone, 
Um, she wasn't doing the things that she loved to do anymore. And she has discovered through this process what caused her cancer, what she believes caused her cancer and what fed it. And that was too much stress, not taking care of your nutrition, not showing yourself self-love by doing the things that bring you joy. She said that she stopped going outside and spending time with her horses. She stopped going on nature walks. She, she stopped spending time with her family. She was just consumed with business and work. And eventually she developed cancer. And so now this gave her an opportunity to really stop and press her reset button. And she is choosing moving forward to adopt a completely different attitude on life, a completely different outlook, and just live in this sense of love and gratitude. And what I felt from her and from her husband was this just like, acceptance and like they saw me and they appreciated me and made me feel um, important, made me feel seen. And I'm sure that they do that with everyone that they come into contact with. So to hear during COVID, to have that experience with the Hollywood family first and see that reality and then see the stark contrast with this family, this, this couple, to me was invaluable. I asked her, so what have you changed about your life since getting your diagnosis? And what she shared with me, I really appreciated. She said that they used to have drinks every night, coffee every morning, work all day. And now they don't drink the coffee, they don't do the alcohol, they do things during the day which bring them joy. They take care of their health. They switch to tea um, and non-caffeinated non tea. So they like cut out caffeine and booze, um, less sugar. She said, cancer feeds on stress and sugar. Bummer, dude. This is not meant to scare you. This is just to share my experience and what I learned in my personal experience. So what I took away from that was to really pay attention um, to my actions and how often I am honoring myself. How often am I taking care of that versus doing what I think I'm supposed to do? You know, doing what other people think I should do or what's gonna make other people happy, you know? It's, it's given me a renewed sense of awareness to pay attention to that, so. Well, I hope that you got something out of this story. I felt like it was profound in my life. I hope all of my friends on the East Coast are staying safe from this tropical storm that I know is headed your way or maybe you're experiencing right now. My thoughts are with you. I just washed my hair. As always, lots of love and aloha to you. How far into adulthood were you when you learned how to really empty a Dyson? <laughs>